And we said, hey, we'll cook them damn rabbits, right, I think Todd? it was three. Skipped those damn rabbits, put them on a spit, put them on a fire, and decided to go a little, do a little more hunting. Remember we hung them on that, it was a low limb. Yeah. And we yeah, hung them right. with wire on that limb and built us a fire underneath them. And then we went out to kill some more shit in case we was hungry for breakfast. Well, yeah, we come back from the campfire later and uh, noticed it stinking like hell all over the area. And uh, figured it's out- gross. Well, we figured out if you don't gut the son of a bitch, they explode. It's <laughs> <laughs> funky color too running down there. Well, 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 I can't think of anything funny to say today, so we're just going to start it. It is uh, the Man Shit Podcast back again. It is Labor Day weekend. This episode should be coming out Monday morning for the actual Labor Day, so I'm sure you're either hungover or thinking about getting that way for tonight. We just came back from probably a record-setting dove hunt, not in a good way. I'm sitting here rejoined by, by my dad, Todd Lewis, and we've got First Sergeant Retired uh, <laughs> I have to throw the retired on there, right? Yeah, that's right. Throw the retired in there, yeah. buddy. We, so we've <laughs> yeah. got we've got Daryl Castle back with us. Um, it's man, it's pretty nice having you as a local resident, especially for you on days like today. You didn't just drive five hours to not shoot new birds. Absolutely, yeah, that would not would have been worth it at all. Yeah, yeah. You want to say something this time, or are you gonna be quiet again? Well, I don't have a whole lot to say, but I just had to mention we got our ass skunked this morning when we went dove hunting, didn't we? Yeah, it was pretty damn bad, and I don't think it was because we had a bad spot. This is one of the so this year our rains were pretty weird, and we didn't get them when we needed them for the wild sunflowers to grow. And we happen to be in one of the only spots that I've actually noticed, which I honestly, I mean, I don't look that hard. I'm not, I'm not eat up and tore up with dove hunting. It just normally conveniently falls in our lap every year on September 1st. Um, but no, we had sunflowers. We had a, a, a stock tank there ready to go. And I shot three birds just because I shot one that flew off the water right as I walked up. And I shot the shit. Yeah, yeah, basically. I, I stood over. I got sick of sweating and staring at the sun, so I moved back uh, by where Dad was at, and uh, a few flew by, and we just bo- <laughs> kind of let them go. It, it was it was piss poor. I mean, yeah. it was pretty piss poor. But what do you do? We still had fun. We told them stories around the pickup bed. Uh, we just hadn't had a good cold front this year to push the birds down yet. And I think a lot of people are going to be talking about that, especially these people that drove from out of state, because this area is normally one of the hottest spots in Texas to shoot dove. And it's normally one of those where it's a, you know, less than an hour hunt and all your buddies and you are limited out and it's time to start drinking beer. But we just started drinking beer minus the limit. Anyhow, so uh, just going to do this uh, podcast. I mentioned briefly in the last podcast that we had Dad and Daryl on here about some of the stuff we do it was it was in passing um kind of talk a little bit about going and gigging bullfrogs and stuff like that but this is the day it is saturday and uh tonight by the time you're listening to this we will have already gone and laid waste to a mess of bullfrogs dad actually find out <laughs> there's a limit on bullfrogs did you know that daryl i did not know that <laughs> holy there crap sure really is. yeah <laughs> how many would you think one man can have well, bullfrogs. Uh, I mean, shit, in 24 I, hours, how many bullfrogs do you think? I would think like maybe 50. 50? Tw- 20, yeah. 25, 25 a man. 25 per person. You got to be shitting me. Yeah. I, when I seen that, I took a picture with my phone out of that book because <laughs> I knew Eric had called me a bullshit. Oh, for sure. And I, I had to show him. I asked him, and he said, no. And I said, let me show you. And he said, well, yeah, i never seen that before. Yep. I, mean, I, called, I called bullshit, and he said, what's that line say right there? And it said 25 per person. <laughs> Holy damn. Shit, I right? was like, I'll be damned. All these rules we didn't know. Yeah, about. We better check on rattlesnakes before we go hunting them again next time. I don't Hell, think they I, might be I living on them bastards. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would have I would have bet there was a limit on rattlesnakes before I would have said bullfrogs would have had one. But yeah, no kidding. Appa- oh, yeah. Apparently, they're worried about them, too. I mean, they got to have their nose and everything. But uh, the good news is that on all those trips we went out, I think our best haul in that one night was 96. 96 sounds about accurate to me. So there were more than four of us, so we were covered there. I'd hate to sit down in a clean nine people times 25 worth of bull <laughs> <laughs> It took all night to clean 96. <laughs> yeah, piss on that. Yeah. But anyway, so that is uh, that is part of it. And one of the things uh, I was going to talk about, some of the traditions that we've just recently started, um, besides the shit ton of dove we have around this year not uh you know normally what we do is 
we meet up and all the roosters head out and start shooting dove and the hens stay back and drink wine and clean <laughs> stay clean they don't clean the birds no we're, st- <laughs> <Nope. laughs> we're stuck on that but we go back uh you know well i think this year we're going to eat before we go out normally do we eat before we go out normally? No. We I, mean, always I, do I can late. recall last year, Eric, we uh, went out dove hunted and come back and ate later. Lord, it was like 9 o'clock at night before we was eating. Then we still had to clean or uh, hit out and uh, hit the uh, bullfrog. So yep, yep. it made for a very late night. It does. And, man, that 96 bullfrog night. It's tough. I know. I don't. Wouldn't we finish? It was like 2 o'clock. Yeah, about 2 in the morning before we were finished cleaning them all. It took longer to clean the damn things than it did to go get them. And yeah, we had an yeah. assembly line process. Oh, we were as efficient as possible without having some sort of machinery to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it just Well, the thing is, it was 96 bullfrogs, but it was, what, 192 legs. So <laughs> Is that yeah. correct math? I guess it is. 90 times 2 is 180, and 6 times 2 is 12. So that'd be 192 legs. I don't have enough fingers and toes to add that. No, that's a little <laughs> bit beyond what the human anatomy allows for counting off of appendages. Yeah. But um, so, no, that's kind of – when did we start that? I guess it was about four years ago, and now it's kind of one of the things – I honestly, I think it's kind of funny. Normally, everybody looks forward to the dove season part of it. I think we all get more jacked up about that opening morning and going out after the dove hunt and going for the bullfrogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's just a happenstance that all come together. If you recall, Eric, uh, Gideon took me up in the uh, helicopter for a pig and coyote hunt, and uh, that was the day before dove season kicking off and all. And we got up there uh, flying over some of the uh, areas that Gideon usually hits when we get the uh, hogs and coyotes. And we were, you know, he's putting on me, me on some coyotes. And uh, we flew over three tanks or uh, ponds, as the Yankees would call them, but three uh, stock tanks. And, Pines. <laughs> and, and I just looked down below. I, I thought there's a bunch of lily pads down there. And he and Gideon got us a little bit lower. And I got to looking. I was like, oh, my God. That's freaking bullfrogs down there. Holy shit. I got to tell Todd and Eric about this when we get back. And. So, uh, you know, yeah, sure enough, from there. Yeah, Gideon came back and he was like, God damn, he was more excited about the bullfrogs than he was about <laughs> the about the shooting from a <laughs> he helicopter. He sure was. <laughs> well, you got to understand, Eric, it had been probably uh, 25 years uh, prior to my Army career, uh, the last time I actually hunted bullfrogs and eating frog, le- eating frog legs, uh, you know. Eating, eating, it's the eating, same thing. Eating, whatever the hell, yeah. I don't know. Tomato, how much, tomato. <laughs> how much whiskey deal. have we had to drink, Ooh, Todd? I don't know. Two. Two, oh God, two. yeah, two. That's right, two. But yeah, this is two. what happens when you don't shoot dove in the morning. Two ossifer. Yeah, art I've, I've had two drinks yeah. ossifer. What seems to be the the officer problem? <laughs> yeah, you know how fast you were driving. Twenty. Oh Lord, yeah, we went out that night and slayed them. My God, that was a good time. Oh, Ooh. and we could have kept going. It just got to the point where it was like, man, it's freaking almost midnight. We would, we would remember there if were those. If we kept going, we'd exceeded the dog on limit and, uh, have, and would not have and, known it. And to any enforcement officials, that's the very reason we stopped when we did. <laughs> we didn't want there to be any question just because we didn't know who had taken how many. And, you know, I know you can mix your bags, but that's frowned upon with the, with the, with the. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a fucking clue there was a limit. We just happened to stop in a safe zone. We sure did. But no, then uh, the next year we were geared up and ready to go again. Got Gideon out there and did it again. We went to those same tanks or ponds. That's what Sorry, he did. that was my first beer. And there, was giving and there me was some just burps. as many. Oh, yeah. It, it wasn't because there was less. And that's what's funny. We were is picky. We'll go around them and, and we gig them that first go, but the smart ones jump in the water. Well, by the time we get back around the pond, they're, those smart ones are back on the bank, so we just shine them and shoot them with a suppressed 17. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, it's a real long gig like Round that. Round two. Yep, yep. But no, um, it's really fun, man. If you hadn't gone out gigging bullfrogs, yeah, and I don't think you, I've told you guys about this. One of my uh, buddies, he's got an Instagram account. He's got, I don't even know how many followers now. Almost, He's pushing like 300,000. Uh, and he's, I think he's in Louisiana. If I'm wrong, dude, I'm super sorry. But um, they go out on those flat bottom boats, like those gator boats. Uh, you know, I don't know all the terminology, but they've got those uh, the engines that are at a, high, a harder pitch where they can cut through the mud and all that shit. We're we're from Shall, Texas. We don't have to deal man. with that. Yeah. So they'll go out and he'll go. He takes people on guided frog hunts. Oh wow! And they go out and they catch them by hand. So they'll shine them with the spotlight off the boat, 
kill the en- kill the engine and drift to them, and you grab them. And I'm talking about they make our bullfrogs look like toy poodles. Like uh, these yeah. these things are fun. That'd oh, be a lot of fun. Oh man, mm. and they and they clean house. These things like their heads are. Uh, I mean, the, the front shape of their body's like this. I'm probably making something the size. Uh, grapefruit. Yeah, about a grapefruit on the front half of their body. And, of course, you know, eight, nine inch, 11 inch legs. I mean, they're gigantic bullfrog. And they're, but the thing is, their bellies are all full of crawdads or cr- crayfish. Crayfish. Crayfish, mud bugs. <laughs> mud bugs. It's yeah. all the same shit. But, no, so they do that kind of stuff. But I, I don't think people understand. I think it's kind of cool that he's taking something. Um, and made it into a, a part of his business where, you know, people are paying to go do that because it is so much freaking fun. Well, that's got to be exciting. To oh, man. Big ass bull oh, you. yeah. And because because you're just hanging off the front of that boat with your arms out, you know, and they drifting it up. there, and You got to <laughs> snatch them because they're going to jump. Oh, yeah. I mean, they ain't stupid. But yeah, it's pretty cool. But going around and, and uh, gigging them is pretty damn fun, too. It sure is. There's an art to that, too. There is, and you'll miss too. And and the <laughs> the problem is, you're normally drinking beer while you're doing it, and your aim, your you can have too much aiming fluid. Yeah, some frogs have four and six eyes. Yeah, <laughs> see from <laughs> see from every damn drink. angle. <laughs> but no, so uh, that's kind of what we do now. I think tonight I've been talking to Caleb, who won't call me the fuck back, and I know he listens to our podcast. So this is what you get, Caleb, I'm calling you out. This guy is a 99% success rate on getting his voicemail. 99%. Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's going to come with us tonight. Uh, he's He hasn't gone with us, but there's another uh, stock tank or pond or tank or, or whatever the hell, mini lake. I don't know what the hell else to call it. Water hole. Um, it's, a, it's a lot bigger one. And uh, he said he's seeing bullfrogs out there with – the real deal, like where they've been there probably since before when we first started. So we're going to go see if we can get get us some uh, grandpa frog legs tonight. And if not, I'm sure we'll still have a good time. But the nice thing is, is uh, considering the elements this year and how the weather's been, bullfrogs aren't migratory. So that's helpful. That is helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like them damn dove. Yeah. Give them hell this morning. Oh, them dove are giving, I think they're, they're going to be giving a lot of people hell. I, I, I shot four shotgun shells this morning, hit one dove, and I couldn't even find that son of a gun because he laid, he landed way off in the uh, mesquite pasture somewhere out there and, oh, it just drove me crazy. I, drove, I, I walked back and forth trying to find that dove, Eric. Finally gave it up. Yeah. you. I mean, that's just part of it. Anybody that hadn't dove hunted and says that they've never lost, if anybody says they've never lost a dove, either they've got one hell of a bird dog or they're full of shit. That's no, the two lying. options. Oh, they're yeah. probably full of shit. Even with yeah. a dog, they're lying. They're lying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking of dogs, that's kind of a funny story. Oh, Lord, tell this one. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. I don't know why I didn't think that I needed to incorporate this into this uh, beforehand. But um, And if you're wondering, I actually did take a couple notes. You know why? Uh, because that's, that's not a... <laughs> What is that? Eagle Rare? Eagle, Eagle Rare. Rare Whiskey. Todd's poured it up. Woo! It's good smooth shit. Yeah, it's just pretty hard to find sometimes, isn't it? Yep. Real hard. I mean, unless, unless old Uncle Daryl hits it and he hits a case of peas. <laughs> hey, how many of them y'all got? <laughs> yeah, just load them up in my car. Just load them up. <laughs> yeah, no, Todd turned me on to the Eagle Rare. And this is a hell of a uh, uh, plug for Eagle Rare. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when you drink it, like if you drink that for a little bit, and then even even going back to like Gentleman Jack or... or uh, uh, Woodford Reserve, something I really love. Woodford Reserve, that and, is good stuff. And the only, it's as smooth as Woodford Reserve. It's just not as oaky. Doesn't have that as much char. But yeah. man, if you try to Less drink, smoke. if you try to drink some cheap shit after drinking that, you're out. Yeah, it's, you it'll burn it. you, make you cough, make you look like a whiskey virgin. Oof. But anyway, back to my dog story. <laughs> so, my dog, he's he's pretty damn spoiled, but he's a hell of a bird dog. He's a chocolate lab. And he really doesn't get to do much in the line of hunting uh, except for dove season. So every year dove season comes around, it's always his kind of – it's his play time. And, you know, I was leading up and getting excited to get him out. And my wife's been gone all week, so when was it? It would have been uh, Thursday night. Bo was acting weird when I woke up. And I got uh, – I woke up and was waiting on my daughter to wake up because I had to take her to daycare started looking around and there was a a a pile of shit i thought it was throw up (laughs) because it was that bad it it still had grass and all kinds of shit in it 
uh, not not poop, shit as in stuff in it, and it was right there on the tile going in. So we have tile in the kitchen area, and then it goes into our living room and turns to carpet. So there was a pile on that, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess he got sick. At least he did it there. Well, I walked the corner, and there's a fucking pile of shit in the living room floor behind her couch, and we did a wall and ship lap because of those assholes. Shit lap? Shit lap is what it is yeah, now. Shit lap? Shit, shit lap. Shit lap. That some, might be, I might some call people this call episode it ship lap, shit lap. But it's shit lap. But thanks to Chip and Joanna Gaines <laughs> from fucking Fixer Up, or my house looks like it throwed up on it. So we did ship lap walls <laughs> in a couple of rooms, and I did this high dollar damn ship lap wall in our living room, and there is a uh, double reclining uh, love seat, I guess you'd call it, behind, right up next to it, and behind it. Is where my fucking dog likes to go when he throws up. So I just automatically assumed, and he doesn't do it that often, but I automatically assumed it was a pile of throw up. So I went outside and got an old dust pan so I could scoop the majority of it up and not rub it down into our brand new freaking carpet anymore than I had to. Scoop it up, and I just used my hand and shovel the rest in, and then it like it broke that crust that was on it. No, it was not throw up. It was throw down. It was a big pile of steaming diarrhea dog shit. And if you had never smelled diarrhea dog shit, there ain't nothing like it. So anyway, I thought that was as bad as it could get. So I cleaned it up, and I was all bitchy. My wife gets home. It's all good. Wake up. Uh, she woke up like in a super alert, just like rolled like boom, shot out of bed. And I'm like, what's wrong? She said, I think Bo crapped. Or she said, I think Bo shit. She acts like she's super... Super Mrs. Delicate and Innocent, but when you start shitting on her new carpet, she throws the, <laughs> she'll throw that S word out there. Shit words coming out. Drop the shit S-bomb. words coming. She drops. The S-bomb. She might have said, "I think both fucking shit." I don't know, but uh, <laughs> probably I, uh, not. Nah, I uh, she did. I popped up. <laughs> <laughs> We've done what from we're, man we're shit all podcast gonna to get in dog trouble. shit yeah. podcast. This, this podcast changing this name to yeah. dog shit yeah, for this get episode. The dog shit beat out of us. <laughs> so I'm like, oh fuck! And right when she said it, I smelt it, and it was it was like somebody hit you with a wet blanket across the face, soaked in dog shit. Soaked in dog shit. So mm. we, we literally, we literally thought that it was. Uh, we thought it was in our bedroom. That's how bad it was. And we start looking. It was one of those smells that changes the temperature of the room. You better be glad it wasn't on the, you know, the foot of your bed. That's where it smelled like it was. <laughs> so so we we got our, our uh, cell phone lights out. She turned her lamp on. We had our cell phone lights out looking. There wasn't nothing in the bedroom. Wasn't nothing in the hallway. Well, then it's tile in uh, where her front office is, kitchen. Then it turns into the living room again. And this motherfucker put like a six-foot string of diarrhea doo-doo behind it in the same spot. This didn't have no texture to it at all. This shit soaked down to the carpet pad. Mm. And it was so bad, it stunk up the whole house. So, you know, she kept telling me, like, you've been working on the house all week. I, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm like, it's 615. I got to get ready to go dove hunting. <laughs> so, got to have your priorities. So, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, God bless my wife. She cleaned up them piles and was going to go get the steam cleaner. Anyway, the whole house stunk like shit to start the day. Uh, thank goodness she's cooking two big old pork shoulders for pulled pork tonight, uh, and that kind of covered it up. And I went and rented a steam cleaner and and cleaned the duty spots up. But yeah, that way, me and Todd don't have to sit smell here and it. smell yeah. dog shit. Well, well, you know, here at Man Shit, we try to run a professional operation, even though <laughs> yeah. we're doing this in my fucking kitchen. It's at least going to not stink like dog shit. <laughs> exactly, and that's a good thing. Well, and there's 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 you can look at it, the glass half full or the glass half empty. Glass half empty would be. Man, you don't even have a studio. You ain't got no padded walls. We're sitting here in the house having to do all this, and there's a kitchen right here. And But the glass half full guy, he looks at it and he says, man, we're in a temperature and climate controlled location, and there's a refrigerator fully stocked with beer, ice for your whiskeys, all that right there within three steps. So you can be whichever guy you want to be. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm kind of a half full kind of guy. Yeah, I like the fridge. <laughs> yeah, fridge is good. Fridge guy. But anyway, I, I didn't even plan to go on that tangent, but my dog did take a big old hot shit on me two nights in a row, and I feel like old Bo needs a shout Bo. out for this yeah. shit. <sighs> he about killed me on this deal. But anyway, <laughs> so like, did you guys, I know, I already, I, you know, I've heard so many of the old hunting stories and shit like that, but, um, did you ever, like, what did y'all normally do growing up and, and your younger years for opening dove season? 
I mean, it was did y'all yeah. ever go on big dove hunts? We used to I, go out to like Larry and Trisha's, didn't we? And he'd bite the heads off doves and stuff like that. Yeah, that's when you were up at you know, six, six, seven years old, probably. Yeah. But you go back to when me and Daryl was little. We didn't. There wasn't no seasons. There wasn't seasons <laughs> then, you know. I mean, we didn't. Even, the climate really never changed, as far as we was concerned. We. That's because Al Gore wasn't around. We just uh, kind of drug our guns around everywhere we went and had a damn good time at everything we did. And if we saw something we wasn't sure what it was, maybe we shot it and went and looked at it close. I don't know. Just, that's called ground checking. Yeah, that's a ground check. Okay. Well, we did a little ground checking. Yeah, we hunted times. whatever the hell we wanted to hunt. And they they didn't no, know nobody said nothing about it. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't even know what land we was on, but we had a damn good time. But I also think that was back in a time when even like highway patrols, local law enforcement, game wardens, they weren't as, I don't think they were as, it, I don't think it was because of them individually, but because of their bosses and the people above them and the people in legislature, you could get away with a lot more. Yeah. Not well, saying they let people slide, but they were a lot more reasonable on certain things. Like if you had 16 dove in your pouch and your buddy had 14, when y'all were growing up, would one of you got a ticket or would he have just said slide it over to the other guy? Probably wouldn't even have checked our bags. I mean, he would have just, if we had license and and uh, we were doing the right thing, then I mean, he he wasn't going to shake us down like that. I yeah. mean, we were out doing what he believed was a good thing for kids to do. Right. You know, I mean, we could have been in town just, you know, stealing shit and breaking windows out and just getting in trouble. But instead, we were out doing what, what they did. I, I would assume they did pretty close to what we did. Yeah, and I would think that that might be a big issue with kids today. And, and I don't think it's that at their own fault. We're in a society now where hunting is frowned upon by the, the major uh portion of the the population and i need to stop saying these p words there's too many <laughs> but no um and not to mention you know these families that are trying to be successful and provide they are moving to the bigger cities because there's more money there which i've done that i chased the money in san antonio and guess what it cost proportionately more to live there and you that's why we're back it's like fuck it's the same difference it's it's you can make more on your total income, but your expenses are through the roof. So you end up in the same quality of life. And for me, being from a small town, it was it was a lowered quality of life to, you know, do, basically do the same amount of uh, financial success. So that's why I came back here instead of trying to keep, you know, do the splits and have one foot in this swimming pool and one foot in this one over here. Just come back and get back to the roots and do that. But... No, it is. It's pretty crazy, and and I think I kind of got on a tangent, but I think you know since the majority of people live in the major, like the metropolitan areas, stuff like that, that uh, they're they're just they they have no need to hunt. Plus technology, I mean, shit, you guys didn't have the option for in home entertainment. No, not at all. Entertainment is what you could find outside them uh, the front door, the back door. Exactly. Like I bet kids nowadays don't even make mud pies. <laughs> no, I, you know I, what I mean? Not at all. No, I mean that was something look, like little kids did that all the time when I was growing up, and I'm a lot younger than you guys are, and I bet kids don't do that anymore. Well, the whole the whole dynamics of everything has changed when it comes to the young hunter, Eric. You know, uh, forty years ago when me and Todd were doing that, well, maybe forty five years ago when we we're getting out to uh, grabbing your you know your pellet gun, or your twenty two rifle, your shotgun, and heading out and jumping some barbed wire fence and going to hunting somewhere. Had no idea whose land it was on, but the landowner did not give a shit. All right. Because kids were outside. Kids were outside doing a thing. You know, nowadays with the technology and all that, there's less kids out hunting and all. But the the bad thing is uh, nowadays there's so many uh, young as they get into tomfoolery or problems or this and that and other that uh, landowners do not trust the people on their lands anymore. So you see so many posted lands now, there's a, there's less places to go hunt unless you got the monies to lease it. Yeah, and, and and to piggyback off of that, another big thing that's changed is how fucking sue happy people are now. Yeah, exactly. So a a kid in that same situation, let's say times hadn't changed yet and landowners still wanted to see kids out there, uh little Timmy goes out with his gun out deer hunting on some guy's place that's uh maybe they know through church or something and he shoots himself in the leg or he falls down and breaks his leg, the fucking mom will sue him nowadays. I mean, there's yeah. there's there's people here local that have had that happen. 
Yeah. I'm not going to say names, but, you know, they've been out playing at a place and tried to sue the motherfuckers. Now that person, every time their kid wants somebody to come play with them, they have to sign a fucking liability waiver. Oh, yeah. To go I, play. I would venture to say that when we were kids, uh, now now looking back, you know, we didn't have a clue whose land we was on and, and uh, we, we didn't know who knew what, but I'll bet you that the man that owned that place knew damn good and well we were going down inside there. And he probably walked down through there and made sure we wasn't throwing a bunch of cans and bottles and shit out. And as long as we were respecting his place, he probably never said a damn word to us or our parents or anybody else in town and just enjoyed us enjoying what he enjoyed. Well, that, that's how I got and, introduced into hunting with some good people through church, the Bradley family. Um, and then, you know, uh, Aunt Michelle Mary Jeff, which uh, I think this episode will come out after this one. Uh, I did one with my cousin Andy, uh, their stepdad. You know, basically their dad uh jeff stanfield they have a hunting outfit and he let dad and i hunt out behind their lodge and i shot my first buck there and um you know and then we met uh, a family that was a ranching family through church the bradley family it was dusty and his dad max and uh sandy and julie and all of them they were just good people and you know come on out y'all want to hunt uh, they, they wanted you to enjoy yeah. what they all enjoyed yeah. as kids all the way and, up to And adults. every time I shot a deer, we went up to the house, and Max and Sandy came out and gave me hugs, and we're just as excited as we are. But what what's happened now is I think it's just a culmination of a lot of things. There is there is the fact that, you know, just like like we've already touched on, like the liability issues, the, uh, the issue with um, – the kids not being as interested. Uh, another big thing, though, is there's a lot of money being made on deer leases. Yeah. Which you can't blame them for that at all. Because right now, farming and ranch is a tough-ass gig. And you can't blame them on that. So there are a lot of dynamics that have changed and shifted the way things work. But I honestly think even if hunting was still as easy to come across as it was when you guys were younger, it would only be guys y'all's age taking advantage of those circumstances and those same landowners don't give a fuck about two 50 year old dudes going out there and having a good time like they no. <laughs> they want to see little kids doing it yep. and the kids now don't there's too many options there's too many things available for entertainment now there's you know xboxes playstations uh nintendos there's um uh, i'm being very vague about that i'm a i'm a nerd that likes that shit too i just also like to hunt and thank god i grew up grew up in podunk or else i wouldn't you know i mean I, I'm sometimes just as guilty. Like our kids start acting or starts acting up. I take my cell phone, pull up Netflix and start one of her favorite movies and she'll just chill out and watch it so that she's not disturbing an entire restaurant. Y'all didn't have that option. You had to get up and carry our screaming and squalling asses out back to the car. Yeah. You know, I, I think about, I've, I've, I've thought about on a, a lot of Hey, memories. what you doing over there? Good looking? She's cooking. Ain't that how the rhyme goes? Hey, yeah, I, just, what I saw my wife bent over getting into the oven. <laughs> Say, Hank Williams says something about that. Hey, yeah, good yeah, looking exactly. what you got cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, you good you know, looking. Eric, Eric started doing Darryl's this. Daryl's eyeballing that pork shoulder over there. <laughs> well, you better believe I am. <laughs> I've heard it called a lot of things, but not a pork dough. shoulder. <laughs> no, I was talking about the food, Dad. I Shit. know, I know. I'm picking on you. Okay. But but looking back, you know, you, you started this podcast, and it and – to me, it's been golden because I've went back and started thinking about a lot of memories. And I, I thought all the way back, every time I remembered a story, it reminded me of another one and another one and another one. So I tried to think back as far as I could remember. And as far as I can remember, I was probably... That's I probably foil. Sorry, five, guys. Six, five or six years old. And I would go down to Perry Brothers. I don't know if you had a Perry Brothers in your town, but I had a Perry Brothers in my town. That's where you got your bullets for Man, your caps. Man, is that where them girls in high school got them Perry's panties? That's it. <laughs> so, so uh, That's you go down for there for a day. nickel, and you could buy a big pack of pops for your pop gun. Okay. Well, so I had these that's, cap guns. Hey, and that's P-O-P. P-O-P, not P-O-T. <laughs> <laughs> Perry Brothers sold uh, that big old bag pop, of pop. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... I shot the the cap guns, man. If you'll remember back, guys, cap guns were a pain in the ass. They they didn't feed well. They didn't pop every was time. It the, was it the ones on the paper strip? Yeah, okay. them, the paper That's strip. It. So I figured out it didn't take me long. You know, I was one of Use those kids hammer. that I I tried me some shit. You know, so 
I just got the claw hammer out of the kitchen drawer. <laughs> and I went out there and I rolled them pops out and I started popping them one time. That pow, pow, it was pretty fun. Yeah. And then I broke me off a roll. You know, it used to come in like a, a loaf of bread or something. Yeah, you know, but you'd they tear were, they were cut into pieces. So you tear yeah. off a roll and I decided, you know, I wonder what happened if you hit the whole damn roll. Well, guess what? When you get a good lick on that, man, that's a hell of an explosion. <laughs> so from that, I remember going to, uh, you remember the little 38 special pistols, you know, kind of like the detectives had in the movies, you know, and it had a little little caps that was glued together where oh, you they got were, like 10 shots. It was a red plastic ring. Yep. You yeah. snapped them down on there. Pistol at a track and they shot yeah. every time, man. That oh, was yeah. a hell of a pop gun. That was improvement in technology. A few million of those, <laughs> I promise and uh, and this is right along with taking a hoe and digging trails in the yard and building fires and bridges and burning your army men and all that kind of fun <laughs> shit. I mean, we we had wars in my backyard and uh, parades. I mean, there was bad car wrecks and truck wrecks and fires that he had all, to tonk all with a fire toy cars. Truck. Damn right, you had to tonk a fire truck, buddy. You had to put the fire out. So you guess what? You had to build a fire, put the fire out. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun growing. But and, and from there, I I don't know who or if I. I don't know how this came to mind, but somehow, uh, back in the day, BB guns were all metal. They weren't plastic like they are now. Was it like, like was it like a like the equivalent of a Red Rider? It, it was like it was the lever? original Red Rider. Like, okay, it was all metal from a Christmas story. Yeah, you could beat somebody to death with one of them. <laughs> and uh, better, so, but you screw the tip out of it, and it was all metal. The end was even metal. The ones that I bought you in Europe the, were plastic. plastic. Yeah, and and the loading. Uh, dock on the end of it where you could put more BBs in was plastic too. Yeah. Well, this one, you turned it a half turn and you poured BBs in it till it was full and it shot every shot. It was, it was legit. That one I had didn't do that. Yeah, but it was legit. That it old was, Benjamin it was Sheridan it, pellet gun did You though. cock it, pump, shake it up down one time and you had you a squirrel load. Well, <laughs> I, I pretty much extinguished all the sparrows and, and red birds and allegedly everything out allegedly. of, out of Knox city. Just go at the whole town probably. And it come down to squirrels was about the only thing left. Well, my little BB gun, I had to shoot them like, I don't know, too many times to, to kill one. So <laughs> I got me a, a box of 22 I shells. I shoot both their eyes out, and then I shoot them in the ears, mess up <laughs> no, their equilibrium. It, it wasn't and... <laughs> that bad, but it, it, it's hard to kill one with a BB gun, man. Yeah, you got to have a pellet gun so for a squirrel. So I got me some 22 shells, and I and I didn't have a 22, so I was trying to figure out. And my cousin over here, well, cuz. So, so uh, did you go buy them, or did somebody have them? Uh, I probably broke into my dad's stuff and found them. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, he was I, I figured, though, like if you were like 12 years old back then and you had no, a 22, you could no. probably go buy your own shells or did they still have? You could. You could buy your own shells oh, yeah. if, you, if you could walk you can't in the now, store can you? with money, you could buy them. It didn't Eight, matter what it was. 18 like, you know, and older now, Yeah, I think. you bought, even went and bought cigarettes for your mom and dad at that age. You know, oh, yeah. 12 years old, you went oh, yeah, and bought no cigarettes deal. for them. Until I was 15 years old, you, I mean, it, they, no, nobody asked you nothing about how much money. That they just didn't give a shit. It was money. Yeah. You want to buy them? That's your deal. So, anyways, my cousin tells me about shooting these twenty-two shells on top of fence posts with a BB gun. With a BB backside. gun, you just you just lay it up on a big like six-inch round post. Yeah, and you put your twenty-two on. I mean, your BB gun on there where it'll hit it, and you lean down where you're behind the post. Boom! And it makes a big pop. So basically, you're you were using the BB to initiate the rim fire. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, guess what? It was, I took, it was the firing pin. Yeah. So I took that <laughs> and, and the genius that sounds, I am. Sounds safe. I mean, I, I can count to nine. So I was a genius. So I took some black electrical tape and I took my thumb and was rolling it. What did that it. have to do with nine? That's, that's, how, that's how far I can count. Oh. <laughs> I'm a genius is what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, okay, okay. So I took this black tape and I'm rolling it against the roll. You know, if you ever had a piece of black tape and you're a kid, you're playing with it. And I roll that backwards and I'm like, damn, that's almost as big as my BB gun barrel. And I'm like, damn, that's got a hole in the middle of it about the size of a 22 shell. I'm like, holy shit. I tore that off of there, put that on the end of my BB gun, perfect fit. Stuck, went in there and robbed me some 22 shells out of my dad's shit. Stuck me a twenty-two long rifle in the end of that. So was it? So was it dangling off the end of the? I mean, was it no. just like just out there? Yeah, the, the whole basically shell. Basically, electrical tape is the same length as a twenty-two shell. Yeah. So I stuck the twenty-two shell in there, put it on the end of my BB gun, and I taped it with electrical tape so it becomes so one. How, how the fuck could you aim it then if it wasn't? There's sights on a BB gun. Yeah, but how'd you get it that straight with the alignment of the barrel? It just works, man. <laughs> So I'm trying to tell you. against the barrel, I I'm guess. I'm just telling I you. I guess. 
I mean, eventually the end of your barrel does work its way down a little bit concave, but I know one good red rider will shoot at least 10,000 22 shells. You've proven that? Yeah, I know that for a fact. God almighty. So, needless to say, after God I figured almighty, out, right there after I figured out you could use one BB and shoot 100,000 22 shells, and I didn't have to buy the 22 shells, I was hunting with a 22, Jack. Damn. And I walked up and down the alleys. And in the park of Knox City with a 22 shell taped to the end of my BB gun and pretty much extinguished every squirrel in Knox City. And something funny, Daryl, I don't even know if Dad's told you about that, but the, about this part. But to piggyback off of that, when we moved back to Haskell, <laughs> so uh, I guess I was in second grade. Dad had so much conviction about the amount of squirrels he had killed <laughs> as a kid. This is no shit. He started building squirrel houses. Putting them in and the trees. putting them in the backyard of our house. Man, I felt bad. And, and protected them. I, I and still told feel bad. me as a kid, don't shoot any fucking squirrels. <laughs> like, I mean, he <laughs> felt that crap. bad. <laughs> I don't know. So it tells you shit. how many squirrels I killed. It had to have been a substantial number of squirrels. All ain't of no them. doubt. All of them. <laughs> I killed them all. That's you how many. Every one. Guilt ridden bastard. You. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was bad, wasn't it, Eric? I don't know. I wasn't there, but 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 you could tell by by the reason that uh, I wanted you not had, to shoot them. He, no he had some serious conviction over that deal. Let me tell you. <laughs> but that's what a a, a non guided young man will do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was entertaining myself. Yeah, I mean you. So. But but see, the kids now they they don't have the uh, they don't have the option to make fun like that. I don't think. No, no. I mean, like, know. if my daughter Langley, if she was walking down the alleys with a twenty two shooting squirrels... She, the, she'd be in jail. I'd, I'd, no, she wouldn't. I'd be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying they'd pick her up and come get your ass. Yeah, but I mean, like, that. I, man, I remember even when... This is... I, what I think is a big thing is that... And this is why I have such an appreciation of getting to grow up in the small town. Towns like rural Texas, 667 people... Uh, Haskell's 3,322. Knox City's like 1,200 and some change. These towns that I grew up in, they're behind the times on what current society is in terms of like as a, as a whole. Um, so you, you don't have the advantage of some amenities, but because you're behind on the times, I didn't have to suffer from the same shit that the kids from the city didn't get to. Like I could still do a lot of that shit. You remember me just leaving little one tire ruts down the alley back and forth from that little go-kart that you that, was that one of your old ones or something and that briggs and stratton motor on the back of it and the, it was shane's old go, go-kart yeah i'd drive that that's some bitch to go 40 how old was i i was living in high school it was probably second grade to be like seven <laughs> back and forth up and down the alley all day just till i burn the tank of gas push it back push it up in the yard then I'd go shoot monarch butterflies in our preacher neighbor's backyard <laughs> with a BB gun. And you know they watched me do that shit. Just thought I'd bring a bucket of monarchs back. Every year I'd come in and be like, it's monarch season when they'd migrate through. And I would fuck me up some monarchs, I'm telling you. But I don't, you know, now like Langley couldn't do that. The neighbors would get pissed, call the cops. And, and I would too. I mean, you probably would too. If, if your neighbor's kids were in y'all's backyard shooting shit, it'd be like, get the fuck out of my yard. But I don't know. There's just been a shift in the way our culture views things. But I was fortunate enough being in a small town that those things weren't eliminated yet. I think they are now. I mean, even in even in Podunk out here, they damn sure are in the city. Kid walking around with a Red Rider BB gun get called into the police like lickety tick. Wouldn't be no question. Oh, yeah. Was it nothing like riding across town with a 22 or shotgun rifle? Shotgun rifle. A shotgun. That'd be a good, good combo. Yeah, they yeah, make them. I think well, they, they make them. Well, they do em. make them. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, they sure you do. could have one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a uh, twenty-two rifle and shotgun uh, laid across the handlebars of your uh, bicycle head on the other side of town to go hunting somewhere. Yep. Nobody give a shit. No, because there's like, well, at least they ain't in trouble. And now they're in trouble. Yeah. You see that nowadays, you'd be like, what in the hell is that kid doing with a damn rifle on his bicycle? Shit, even if it was Culture an adult. Change. I got I got guys, check this out. So <laughs> I got guys that ride around on bicycles with acoustic guitars that are probably in there. They're I, I don't know. I bet they're in their low forties going on ninety seven due to methamphetamine. Were they hit in Nashville? 
No, I don't know. He just walks That's around. That's what he and thought. He slaps the neck of it going, bang, 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 like he's playing something. <laughs> I don't know if he's all there upstairs, and I'd bet money all his teeth ain't there. But, yeah. hey, we got meth in the small town, too. So what do you do? I, I, you, do you remember getting in trouble when you were a kid that we uh, we uh, went down there and put money in the damn uh, water deal and turned the water deal on down there by your house? Oh, yeah. And the freaking water ran all the way past your house and down in the creek and shit. Boy, they wanted to know who wasted that water. I mean, yeah. We put the money in it. That was a, uh, and, and a, a water dispensing uh, hose for the farmers. Oh, it like was a fill, nickel. To fill yeah, water. It was a nickel. nickel in. I bet you 100 gallons of damn water shit, come piling out. Shit, I bet it's 1,000. I it bet it's 1,000 gallons. Yeah, yeah. Because that water ran all the way past y'all's house. They wanted to know who the hell turned that on and let it run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. without a doubt. And I can remember when we get a little older... Uh, so, no. so y- y'all might explain it. Cause I mean, we've got a lot of guys that farm and understand what that is, but, uh, I'll just kind of touch on it real quick. Basically what that would be is it's going to be, how, how big y'all think that hose is? Is it a two inch? Three. Three yeah, inch three hose. Three or four inch. Three, three inch four hose. Inch. And it's got, uh, um, some fittings on the end that'll fit on a, a female ended collar that goes on big tanks. Like guys that are farming and going out spraying, uh, weeds or spraying their crops for whatever, it's just kind of a service that the city offers where they can get on the city water. There's a well there at the edge of town. And so apparently back then it was only five cents and you could hook up to it and fill up your water tank on your trailer and then haul ass. They just dumped a water tank basically out on the ground for fun. Yeah, we oh, just yeah. got a nickel in it, turned it on, played in it for a minute and hauled ass. Well, it ran for 20 more minutes. Oh, oh you had to manually turn it off. No, it, well, it, you know, it ran you, for so long. When you put long. the nickel in, it ran for like five minutes nonstop. You but couldn't turn it it's off. it's blowing a fucking stream. It's yeah. blowing a three stream. And we played stream. in it, it was cold as freaking ice. Oh, yeah. We're like, screw that. That ain't fun. So, so we you hauled just ass. <laughs> but the water kept running. And when it did, it ran all the way down, washed the street out. Nearly, oh, you know? shit. When I got in high school, uh, you know, a buddy of your, you know, a lot of us get in back of pickup trucks, ride around town, have a good time. Well, you know, he might have a buddy up in another vehicle up ahead. He'd, he'd run up ahead, throw a damn nickel in that. Then uh, you'd be in a Looks pickup good, behind huh? it coming through. And uh, everybody get hit by the water as you're going underneath the damn thing. It was, you know, oh, it was a yeah. funny-ass joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, until it ain't running. What then they it? don't think that shit's funny. Dude. They call that the good old days. Yeah. Good old days, yeah, absolutely. When there was water to waste. I'm just glad I got to experience a little bit about that. But, uh, no, we've... Uh, We've, what, you what, never did anything like that? I didn't go turn on no water well and let it run just did, for a funny joke. Did you ever go on a camping trip with you and your buddies or anything like that? Yeah. Well, same thing. I mean, Daryl can tell you, we went on a camping trip one time, me and him and Larry, I think. We was cooked some rabbits. Yeah, we was hungry as hell. We wanted to get, eat some rabbits. What, we nine how'd years that, old? How'd that go? If if we were nine, we were, we were close to probably eight, seven, eight, nine years old. <laughs> How, so what was the deal on that? What'd well, y'all yeah, do? Daryl, you tell that story. Well, we had uh, our Sometimes BB guns. Sometimes my memory and, uh, the same You as probably Darryl's. had that Benjamin air rifle by then, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Five millimeter. That's yeah. a killer. Hey, we was probably a mile you didn't or two away from the house. shell on the end of that. Mm-mm. Didn't need one. <laughs> it was a pump mile it up. Two. Just pump that motherfucker up. Ten pumps. Ten pumps. That's a hell of a killer machine. Was it uh, 177 caliber? No, it was five millimeter. I still got that bitch. Holy it still works. Moly. I, yeah, he got it when I was still in school. I, yeah. I killed some shit with it, too. Yeah. You could almost give it a when deer in made, the head. You could kill it, I they think. They made shit right back then. Yeah, and it lasts mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. So anyways, go ahead. This big rabbit. It was a big rabbit trip. Oh, yeah. We was probably nine was years gonna old. We going to camp out. No flashlights. No nothing. Two to three miles from the house. We're going we're gonna to camp out overnight. Start us a fire. Who knows how we... You know, probably confiscated the matches or whatever, gets fire going. Hungry as hell. So we killing some rabbits. And we said, hey, we'll cook them damn rabbits, right, Todd? I think it was three. Three rabbits? Three rabbits. Yeah. yeah. Skint those bitches. Skint those damn rabbits, put them on a spit, put them on a fire, and decided to go a little, do a little more hunting. Remember we hung them on that, it was a low limb. Yeah. And we yeah, hung them right. with wire on that limb and built us a fire underneath them. Like by their back feet or what? Yeah. Like, like we, well, we skinned them. Sounds sounds like, and then we hung them up by a wire. That's logical. And built a fire, perfect fire, good coals where you cook even. And then we went out to kill some more shit in case we was hungry for breakfast. Because <laughs> this was going to be a success. It was a success. Oh, there's no doubt. It was already <laughs> successful because we had three. Oh God! So damn. go ahead, Daryl. Well, yeah, we come back from the campfire later and uh, notice it stinking like hell all over the area, and uh, figured it's out. Gross. It was real, real gross. Yeah, it was gross. And yeah. we were some killers. 
Well, we figured out if you don't gut the son of a bitch, they explode. <laughs> it is, it's funky colors, too, running down everything. Oh, God dang. So, so y'all had green stomach bile all hey, cooked we out. we had to and... change our campsite in the, at night. You just abandoned it? Yes. Wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's three that, oozing carcasses oh, hanging above the nasty. Pole. That's And if, if you guys, if any of you listening don't hunt or you've never been across a dead animal that died and bloated in the 100 degree heat, you don't know oh, that man. smell. That is and I can't nasty. imagine if you turbocharge it at 500 degrees what that shit smells like. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we knew just enough to be dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. we I almost re- had it. I remember coming back Almost. to that campsite and scratching our heads like, what in the fuck did we do wrong here? Exactly. <laughs> and it, it, it was like an epiphany, like, you got to take the guts out. You know, we had yeah, we didn't trained know. on that shit. It yeah. was like, oh, shit, you got to take the guts out. Uh, you can't just eat the meat off the outside of no, it. No. Because you're cooking the whole thing. Yeah, but if nobody's ever showed you, how the fuck else do you find out? So, I guarantee you that's how the first person ever cooked an animal figured that oh, shit out. Oh, hell yeah. You want to get that out. <laughs> you imagine if you had like a whole deer hung up and his shit blowed up? Ooh, oh, man. man. <laughs> and you chased him with a rock and killed him? You'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, you'd be real. You'd still fucking eat it. Yeah, so what, that's what it like, happened. God damn, I ruined this thing. Yeah. Son of a bitch. But anyways, do, do you remember having a flashlight back then? Did we no. have any lights? Headlamps? No. Lights on our guns? We didn't have light for shit. We didn't no. have a battery or a dime to buy a battery with. We probably stole that nickel we put in a freaking water machine. Oh, yeah. You just hunted in the dark when it got dark. Figured well, we it had, out. We had enough money to go shoot swimming. shadows. Though, Moonlight and starlight. Shoot that's shadows. That's shoot all you that's need. That's it. <laughs> yep. Hope it wasn't a skunk. You know, that yeah. kind of reminds me. This is kind of a, of a, an event that, that uh, transcends time for me. That's kind of like, y'all, we had this guy. Uh, I'm trying to remember what he looked like. I'm pretty sure this motherfucker was a white guy pretending like he was part Native American. <laughs> came and gave this... He was a white guy. I know he was. <laughs> Motherfucker was saying he was Native American. And he was talking to us about all these ancient practices and things that he studied. I was in, uh, it was me, Ricky Dell, and I think it was just me and Ricky Dell. Uh, one of my buddies from. Uh, part of the, part of the sticker papa. Yeah. Original. But Ben, Ben wasn't in that. Was, oh, okay. uh, so Ricky Dell Smith, myself, and, uh, and a few of us other guys did it. <laughs> so anyway. It like a spirit well, guide or something? <laughs> this guy thought he was. This motherfucker was white. I'm telling you. So he came and he gave this deal and he's talking about all this stuff. Well, he gets into talking about brain tanning. Hey, hey, hang on a sec, guys. This gentleman, Hello. Caleb Rice. Who is it? Decided to call me while I'm doing a podcast. Caleb, say hi to this podcast. Hello, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. I've been trying to call I've been trying to call this pecker head for a little while and he won't ever answer. Oh, he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he did. He put the he he, he hit, a hard pass. He slammed the red button. I, he he may actually have bad service. He might have had to work today. I I'm, would have bad service. I'm just I'm just giving him a hard time. But anyway, um, this guy starts talking about brain tanning. Well, at this time we we still had that screechy internet at school, and we started looking up a little bit of the details. Looked up it uh, about it, and we we're like, shit, we can go shoot some raccoons like this weekend. I remember that. We're going to do a camping trip. We'll shoot some coons. We'll uh, skin them out. And then brain we'll, tan them. we'll brain tan them motherfuckers. So we looked it That's up. It's a raccoon dick uh, toothpick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't fuck with the dicks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so. Pass on that. Dad still had Team Auto, the, the shop in uh, Knox City. And <laughs> we go out and we shoot these. I think we shot three raccoons. And man, have you ever skinned a coon? Oh, yeah. Dude, they Wonder are one. so greasy. Oh, yeah. I know. I couldn't. Like I a bear. Could, I couldn't. It's just like a bear. Gross. A badger I, is about the worst I've ever seen, but oh. raccoons right up there with them. Well, yeah. and I, I didn't know how close it was to a bear until I filmed a bear hunt and I helped them skin out a bear. And it's the same deal, just just nasty, greasy. Clabbered fast. So we did everything that we'd read about and we skull capped them things and scooped their brain. They said this white guy that was pretending to be an Indian or a Native American was saying, you know, every. Every, God gives these animals everything that, that you need to do everything you'd want to do. So we're like, fuck, that's pretty fucking cool. Let's tan some, some raccoon hides. So we do that. We skull cap them, scoop the brains out, and do everything it says. You know, rub it on there and do everything. And them motherfuckers turned out like a fried-ass, crispy piece of paper. Like, there wasn't no <laughs> flex to that shit. He had all these hides out there that, that he was displaying that said they were brain tanned. The motherfucker was so full of shit. They'd already been brushed, and they were they were chemically tanned, like, undoubtedly, and mm. brushed to be soft and felty. Kind of like, like, I've got an Axis 
uh, cape out there on the couch. It's, it's like you could cuddle with it in the back. So th- these wouldn't even flex. If he flexed it, it was it was just like beef jerky is what it was like, like well real beef toast. jerky. Yeah, I was like, man, screw that. I think we threw those away, didn't we? I'm pretty sure they got. And then lost. we we salted those pheasant hides that one time we went hunting. I still have your pheasant hide. Yep, yep. That some bitch don't flex much at all. Nope. <laughs> it's cardboard. Anyway, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna go too far no down more that road. But wait, y'all got any? Um, yeah, man. I remember. Let me let me tell an old story. I remember being a little kid and uh, my aunt Trish and Uncle Larry. We'd always go. They lived outside of Knox City, and we'd dove hunt out there. And every year. Um, we'd come back with all the shit we'd killed and we'd be cleaning them and Larry would mess with all the little girls and he'd have all the little boys and girls you know all the all the cousins would all come over there and you know we ranged in age from probably junior high down to toddler and he'd be out there and he'd you know he'd you know how he liked to build up a story and be like yeah you know here's here's the way you're supposed to do it and you you you, you scrape these feathers back and you, you break these wings off and then you got to and then he'd sling that dove in his mouth and rip his head off and go, and spit the head out. <laughs> and all the little girls would be like, Aah! and run <laughs> off to the house. But well, it was yeah, this is the kind of shit that breeds uh, what we are here in the small town. But man, I wouldn't trade it for the world. This is, I love it. Y'all, y'all got any funny you, shit like that? You remember that? when he tried to bite the head off that duck that time? I, was that him or was it someone else? Oh, it was him. And it, he was going to pull the head off of that duck, and it squished his brains in his mouth. And he he was gagging and spitting. He's like, and sometimes it just don't work. Oh, God damn. It was nasty. Yeah, that is nasty. You, you, you don't bite no head off no what, duck, what, man. So, so Daryl, <laughs> like. It's too nasty. When you were still active duty and busy with all the stuff you were doing in the military, did, did you ever get to hunt or anything? Or were you just kind of chained to, to, your, to your job duties? I was pretty well chained my job duties a couple of times out at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I got to go out hunting a couple of times, but uh, I never shot a damn thing because there's so many soldiers out there that were rednecks that wanted to go hunt. Oh, you I know, got you. You had to go sign up to go hunt in certain areas, and so you was relegated to one specific area. All that time in the military, I never shot one damn thing on a military base, so... That's that that's sucked. why you get jacked up when you see bullfrogs around a pond when you're that's shooting right. shit out of a well, helicopter. Well, he, home. he called me and that, I mean, that's what we're time. talking about is shooting and hunting and all that shit. And he's like, well, when I get out, yeah, like, but man, you we're going to shoot up. people. We we're can't going, yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> shooting people is a little bit different shooting. <laughs> 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 Holy damn. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's great to come back home and, and do that kind of hunting. Uh, because you just didn't get to do it out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of my buddies had some successes at it, but uh, there's, you, you got to understand that there's just so many people at a military base at an army post that uh, the hunting opportunities are really limited as far as the areas you got to go to. Right. So, uh, where it's, pretty I got much, to, it's pretty much on base location. On right? base. On base. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I got to come back home and link up with Todd, hey, it was game on. Time to get out and, and have a great time. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's that's one of the things we always joke about. We all kind of operate on the prepper mindset of stuff. And, you know, when you watch the news, it's kind of funny. If they start talking about gun control and stuff, it's like, why do you need why do you need these, which they call them assault weapons? They're not. Why do you need these military-styled weapons and things? If, if things pop up and, uh, you know, are you going to take on the U.S. military? It's like, motherfucker, you don't understand. These are a bunch of country-ass boys that are going to the house if shit hits the fan because they've sworn an oath to protect the constitution against enemies foreign and what domestic that's right it don't make a shit if you're from home so anyway that's my little oh i hit i throw my pen around again daryl that's what <laughs> happened in the last time but no it uh it, it is kind of funny but that's just kind of a that was just a random ass tangent those team those tend to happen on the man shit podcast it happens. yeah bunny yeah. trail whatever whatever with but no now, so basically, you know, uh, we've been kind of ranting, kind of reminiscing. This is pretty much literally what a hundred percent of our time is sitting around the tailgate. We did this all morning and we haven't regurgitated a single story. This is all we're talking about fresh shit the whole time. Um, you know, it's, uh, what, do you guys have any dove hunts that stand out? Not today. <laughs> Man, there, there's. I've been on so many dove hunts; it's unreal. <clears throat> you know, years ago, 
you you went dove hunting and you would take a case of shells, which is what today they sell as a case of shell is a half a case of shell. Is it six boxes? No, there's 10 in a case now. It used but, to be 20. But when I was a kid, there's 20. It took all you could do to carry it to the pickup. Well, that's what you left with. Yeah, it was with probably way cheaper, because too. Because you never knew if you was going to be on or you was going to be off. You damn sure didn't want to run out of ammo. Right. You wanted to get your 20 doves. And sometimes it took, you know, 20 boxes of shell to shoot your 20 doves. It happens. It just depends on how many Coors Lights you'd had back in the day. But uh, still the same holds kinda, true today. <laughs> it's kind of the exact same thing, but but uh, it's the exact same thing. And if you get stories, eagle rare, it goes downhill quick. You know, specific 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 stories. Specific. Specific. I mean, uh, specific. probably. I mean, the thing that jumps out in my mind is I've been dove hunting before, and in twenty minutes have my limit and be gone. Right. But but uh, you don't want to stop because then the fun's over. Well, you got to take them home, clean them, put them up, and go back. Oh, yeah. I know that's not exactly today legal. Oh, you have a daily possession limit. Yeah, but, but you know, if you were good and dedicated Alleged. back in the day, you, you might make four trips. And this is all allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, there's no this proof of this. This is hypothetical. Like, if you, yeah. if you were to do this. Here's the deal. If you this. were trying to have a big barbecue for 25 people, you couldn't have 20 duck, man, because nobody get but one. You could always take more people hunting with you. But but all you had to rely on was yourself, <laughs> you know. And you had to, you, you I, had I tell to, you what, I'll tell you a story. You, Back, you're, what you're saying is there was a lot of pressure on to make sure there was plenty of meat. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and <laughs> I'll tell you this: when I when I was in high school, I got in trouble one time because we were talking about going dove hunting at football practice, and coach said we was going to, have to stay thirty minutes late and run because we were. Uh, talking about dove hunting instead of talking about football. Well, we showed him that dove hunting was more important than football because we went and changed our clothes with dove hunting with him out there screaming at us. Of course, for the next three or four days, that was really bad. But for that day, we went all went out and shot our dove. Right. But, you know, for 10 minutes, we showed him. But for four days, he showed us. But, <laughs> but still, you know, there was a priority back in the day and I don't know. I think they just took it all too serious, but we took it pretty serious too when it comes to football. But yeah, but that the was dove their season job. Was different. The first gotta, week of dove <laughs> season was pretty damn important. Yeah, but that was their job. If they losing shit all the time, yeah, then they're going to get fired. <laughs> you know, I mean, wasn't my problem. God, that I sounds had like dove a democratic mindset, away. doesn't it, Daryl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so democratic but, high but, school kid. But during that, I decided that. <laughs> I'll just tell you, I was, I thought I was pretty good. And, uh, we'd go hunting with her, with her, my classmates. And I was reloading at the time because you couldn't buy a hot enough shotgun shell to meet my taste. You were reloading shotgun shells in reloading. high school? Yes, sir. One at a time with yeah. what's called a hand loader. Yeah. So they if don't you'll look way back in the archives of cavemen. There was, it's, it's one at a time. I don't think cavemen had. The uh, gunpowder, but well, I'm, I'm, Todd's day. I'm talking about '78. That's a long oh, okay. time ago. You're talking about modern day caveman. Yeah. So I load me up a case of shells. I mean, a box of shells, and I put them in my basket. I don't tell nobody nothing. And we go out and we go hunting and we shoot some birds and we all end up at the pickup talking shit because that seems like that's what you do is you you go bird hunting. Everybody scatters out, shoots what they can, and they kind of drift back up there where the beer coolers at. Yeah. And you start talking over that the That sounds about right today. So we're standing out there, and we're at the old Hutchison place. And it's, and it's the same old group. It's me and Kevin and Rance and and Is that and the, the same place we always drove by when I was growing up, uh, close to the Chaparral? Or a different no. one? Different no, one. No, I'll have to take and show you. you. You remember the road that cuts through from Old Brown and Oxia that's, that gets swampy? You can't go through there every time going to, like if you're going to cut through to go to the lodge, that road gets oh. real muddy. Turn right at the blinking light and, and there's O'Brien. a windmill right there on the road. Man, nah, fuck out. Anyways, well, that there's a place right there that was the old Hutchinson place, which is Chuck and Mindy Hutchinson's daddy's old place. Well, anyways, we're out there hunting and, and we Damn. we we were in high school, so we were way past drinking age. And uh way we, past it? Yeah, we were way past that. <laughs> drinking age was twelve. <laughs> so we we drank a few beers and these dove had climb over they come over, they were real high. You know you know how they do when it's late in the afternoon, they figure out that 
everybody in hell shooting at them and they're way yeah. up there. Well, everybody. So it wasn't opening weekend. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. It could have been. <laughs> so we we're all lined up and I it let was them July all shoot. 5th. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I let them all shoot and I'm like, you mean to get him? And they said, get him. I said, boom, and bring him down. Oh, because you had them hot loads. Yeah. I didn't or tell hot nobody. shells. Yeah, I didn't tell got, nobody nothing. You got to watch out talking about hot loads these days. Yeah, I was shooting Ain't a 30-inch full choke barrel Good that Lord. I still shoot today. But Is that I'm how long them, our barrels are on those shotguns? Yours is 28, mine's 30. Yeah. But anyways, that was a Always long Always a measuring shot, contest, there. Probably four mm. and a half drams of powder, you know, way past what the barrel should be shooting. But anyways, I'd shoot them dove, and they would cut up and laugh. They thought, they'd thought they shoot six, seven times. And I'd shoot and get it. Well, it, because they're probably all shooting a normal, like, 24-inch or less exactly. barrel with a modified choke, and yeah. you're shooting a super full choke, yeah. fucking 30-inch barrel with a hot-loaded... Six-inch, I mean, a hot number loaded six shot. shot. <laughs> yeah, hot-loaded shotgun shell. It was it was kind of a loaded deal. But anyways, they, they thought I was a crack shot. Yeah, well, you yeah. got to do... I don't know. I grew up... Uh, when I graduated up to 12-gauge, I kind of started on that route just because those were the guns available. And, man, it's... It's a lot harder to shoot, you know, but once you get to where you can aim that motherfucker, <laughs> the only problem is that when you really are smoking them, you're tearing them breasts up yeah. if they're not far out. Oh, it's a clean miss or a smoke. Yeah. It's, like, there's no in between. It's where them down feathers pop off the bottom. Like, yeah. poof, poof, poof. bad. That's what happened to that one today. Fucking breastplate's completely gone off the backside. <laughs> I don't even think we have to fillet it. I can just peel them off of the breastplate. Yeah, it'd probably fall off. Yeah. Well, we only shot three, so if, <laughs> man, at least we cleaned them. Though we, we were, did. we were ethical we didn't and we waste cleaned anything. them. No, we got enough for a cocktail. I'd have much rather shot zero too, because it'd been less work. But it only took me about fourteen seconds to clean. Yeah, about four, maybe fifteen <laughs> seconds, Eric. Yeah. And I got to give my uh, my mom and dad's chocolate lab three dove hearts. Actually, my sister's dog Carl stole one of them like a little asshole. But yeah. old whatever. buckshot, he's old though, ain't he? Yeah, he's getting up there. Yeah. He's a good dog, though. He was he was actually my first dog, and then I had a, a misstep in my life plan and got me a, what, six-month turnaround on a marriage and <laughs> ended that shit restart. pretty quick. Yeah, That's you, restart. You just got to, if you look at it and it ain't working that early, you got to hit the bailout button. That's what the government does. Mm-hmm. So you, I hit the bailout button and uh, just, you know, it worked out good. It was a peaceful split, semi, as much as you could expect. I got a grand dog. Yeah. So, I, I went back to college. I had one year left. I was set to ske- I was scheduled to finish in three years, uh, be done with school. Took a year off to to learn a little bit about myself, apparently, and then, then we went, played rugby. Went back and played rugby and started drinking and had fun and made up for all that lost time I should have fucking done the first two years. But still graduated magna cum laude. And uh, but anyway, you know, I don't mean to brag about myself being the <laughs> smartest motherfucker on the planet, but sometimes you got to. <laughs> But no, um, mom and dad kept uh, Buck, and when I left, I don't even think he was a year old yet. Mm-hmm. Y'all kept him for a year and some change, and uh, he was more y'all's dog than mine at that point, so signed over the AKC papers, and uh, Buck became theirs, and Rusty Buckshot is his registered name, and uh, when I was uh, about a month after I got married to my to my to the love of my life, the pork shoulder cooking queen of the planet today oh what a sweetheart she is <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody says y'all ain't seen her bad side i'm telling you get in here one evening about 10 30 and piss her off and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> that's why i go to bed at nine o'clock you don't piss nobody <laughs> off oh <laughs> uh, but no uh we got uh our current dog Bo, who is the the construction manager for our shit lap Wall a shit lap for sure. Oh god damn! <laughs> but, I was actually on the shitter this morning, Eric, when I got your text that Bo had shit everywhere. So I'd like, rather you hey, shit in my did floor. You know there it used to be less. a bumper sticker called <laughs> "Shit Happened." Yeah, shit happened right fucking there. there. <laughs> you you could throw your whiskey on it. Anyway, oh, but no, Lord. we're kind of getting we're kind of getting loose. I'm gonna just roll her up. Uh, we've already been talking an hour and how long? A little over an hour. Um, Caleb didn't want to talk to us. He's been a little, little wuss tonight, but peckerwood. Yeah, a little peckerhead. And we'll, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get him on here one of these days. We've got a blow fly <laughs> messing with us right now. Anyhow, uh, so tonight's plans basically, like I said, we're, uh, what time is it now? It is three o'clock. We got two hours. Going to meet out up at the, 
at mom and dad's house. We're all going to have some pulled pork and eat and start drink or keep drinking. And uh, then we're going to meet up and head out to Haskell Farms outside of town and see how many bullfrogs we can get. It uh, should be a good time. I'll try to take some pictures, post them on our social media and shit like that. I know these guys have already said they don't give a shit about plugging their social media. So just going to wind it up. Just remember, uh, check us out at Pork Choppers Aviation on uh, Instagram, Pork Choppers Aviation on Facebook. And Twitter's dumb as fuck unless you're famous. So we don't do that. Also, look us up on YouTube. We've got all our helicopter hunt videos and shit like that on there that you can check out. Also, the uh, the man shit podcast post to that. And one day, I will get it set up where we'll video this uh, one day. I'm going to get this baby fine-tuned first. I can't be putting shit out live until I know what the fuck's going to happen. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sign this bitch off. Uh, I'm going to sign off for the Coors, uh, Coors Light to my right. The eagle rare to my right, the eagle rare that's empty to my left, and then also for me, Eric Lewis. You want to sign off, Daryl? Hey, I'm out of here. Daryl Castle out. All this right. is Todd, by God. Yeah, he talked this time, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, so we we're signing out. We're about to get ready to go kill some bullfrog, uh, stab some bullfrogs, kill them later, clean them up, fry them up. That's it. This is your uh, Labor Day episode of uh, uh, Man Shit Podcast. I hope you enjoy it. If you didn't, Oh shit. Later, we'll see tater. y'all later. Later, Tater. <laughs>